Chapter 16, Covalent Bonding. Let's learn to draw Lewis dot structures for compounds. The rules are a little more complicated, but basically the same. First, add up all the valence electrons contributed by each atom. Place the central atom and arrange the remaining atoms around it. The central atom is usually the first atom written, unless that atom is hydrogen. Hydrogen can never be the central atom. Once you've placed the central atom, obey the duet rule for hydrogen by putting a pair of electrons, and then obey the octet rule for all other atoms by putting four pairs, or eight total electrons. There will be some exceptions to these rules later, but we'll learn those as we go along. Let's write the Lewis structure for water. There are two hydrogens, each contributing one valence electron for a total of two electrons coming from the hydrogen atoms. There's one oxygen atom. It brings six valence electrons with it. We're now working with a total of eight valence electrons. We can't use any more than this. We can't use any less than this. The central atom will be oxygen since hydrogen is the first written and hydrogen cannot be the central atom. Place the central atom and then place the two hydrogens on either side of it. Draw lines from the oxygen and hydrogen to represent a pair of electrons that are shared between those two atoms. We then will obey the octet and duet rules to complete the compound. Oxygen needs four more electrons to complete its octet. Each hydrogen is fine with its two electrons. We will place the four remaining electrons as two pairs above and below the oxygen. The two dots represent two electrons that are not bonded. These are lone pairs of electrons, while the lines represent two electrons that are bonded. Any time you have electrons between atoms, you need to draw a line. When you are showing them as lone pairs, you need to show them as two dots. Let's do the Lewis dot structure for ammonia. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Five plus your three valence electrons from each hydrogen gives you eight total valence electrons to work with. Place the central atom nitrogen. Bond the three hydrogens around it. Each line represents a bonding pair of electrons. You now have used six of your eight available electrons. Hydrogens are fine with their duet of electrons. You must complete the octet for nitrogen. Place the lone pair of electrons at the top, and you're done. Occasionally, you will see Lewis dot structures this way with the pair of electrons between atoms, but this is not correct. When you have pairs of electrons between atoms, you need to show those with a line. This is the correct format. If you're sharing one pair of electrons between two atoms, it's a single bond. Sometimes atoms will share more than one pair of valence electrons. A double bond is when the atoms share two pairs of electrons, and a triple bond is when they share three pairs of electrons. When drawing a Lewis dot structure, always try to form single bonds first. You don't form multiple bonds unless single bonds will not work. Multiple bonds that form have much more energy and would not naturally form unless they have to. Let's look at an example where you have to have multiple bonds in order to obey the octet rules. Carbon has four valence electrons. Each oxygen brings six valence electrons. This gives you a total of 16 electrons to work with. As you place the central atom and the two oxygens beside it and bond them, you then start to arrange the valence electrons that remain. No matter how you try to do this, you're never going to be able to get eight electrons around each carbon and each oxygen if you use single bonds. You will have to share more than one pair of electrons between the carbons and the oxygens. If you don't, you'll end up using more than the 16 valence electrons than you have available. This is what we mean when we say they will not form multiple bonds unless you have to. 
In this structure, you have to. With this structure, you can see that the central carbon has 8 electrons around it. This oxygen believes it has 8 electrons around it. And this oxygen believes that it has 8 electrons around it. By using this arrangement, you have each atom with an octet of electrons, and you haven't used more than the 16 valence electrons that you have available. Each pair of electrons between the carbon and oxygen is shown as a line. So since you were sharing four electrons, you have two lines showing a double bond. There are some atoms that break the octet rule. Boron really tends to have fewer than eight electrons in its orbitals. It prefers to have six. It is the only one you're responsible for knowing that breaks the octet rule, other than hydrogen, of course, with only two. Later, when you work with more advanced molecules, you will have some that have atoms that can break the octet rule by putting more electrons in. For example, they use their d orbitals, and they will actually exceed the octet by putting 8 to 12 electrons around the central atom. Let's review the rules at this point. Sum up all your valence electrons. Form single bonds and follow the octet rule and the duet rule if possible. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine always obey the rules. Do not form multiple bonds unless single bonds won't work. Multiple bonds, again, have too much energy. Boron does tend to form fewer than eight electrons around it, usually six. If you get into more advanced molecules that are in the third row, you can often satisfy the octet rule, but you can also exceed it by using the d orbitals. When writing your Lewis structures, place any extra electrons around the central atom, but then again only if necessary.